we go. Okay, we're back at the bus and it's time to do more sealing. I think on the short, I showed you guys a little bit of our sealing progress. We do have a panel in. We've bought the rest of our panels and we've bought our lighting. So the goal today is gonna to be to get at least one more panel up and then maybe some of the lights in place. I don't wanna be drilling and cutting and, and that sort of stuff overhead when the new cabinets are in, just to try and minimize some of the dust. Um, so I also have a solution for window weather stripping finally coming. So I'll show you guys that when it gets here, but it's on its way, I've ordered a hundred feet of it. And it's a square rubber extrusion that basically fits in the channel of the window. So that should help us out. But right now let's switch to an inside view and show you guys what the ceiling looks like. It's still sagging a little bit. It's not fully screwed in. It's just held up there slightly, but uh, you guys can lay eyes on it. I think it's gonna look pretty nice. So there it is. It's kind of hard to capture. Um, maybe I'll switch you guys over to wide angle, but as you can see, It's this paneling. Unfortunately, it's MDF, which is not what I wanted, but I think it looks pretty nice. The price was okay. And it's not that hard to replace if we ever wanted to. I think it will be just fine. So switch over to wide. There we go. You can kind of get a little bit of a, an idea of just how many lines there's going to be. So it went up decently easy. We had to do you know some thinking. I really should have put these wires in place uh, ahead of time, but that didn't happen, that's okay. We're able to figure out our wiring for our lights jumping from one to another. A couple of little notches here and there in the oak. And you know you can see in this one, which is up, the wires are in place. This will be hidden behind tin. And uh, you know we were able to get our, get our wires where they needed to be, plus our original 12 volt. So, that went together pretty well. Didn't really have any too many issues with trimming and stuff that came out okay. Um, we're pretty much straight. And what I mean by that is if we come back here, you can see our oak centerpiece and this line are pretty much close. And this, this oak actually isn't perfectly centered. The line is more centered. And the way we know that is that we have a quarter inch down and we have about a half inch on this side. We could have centered it more, but that's that's fine. I think it actually centers down the aisle a little better than if I were to move it this way. So this line feels pretty much centered down the aisle. So that's nice. Um, it'll be obviously some more complex cuts working around these walls and stuff back here. But the goal, like I mentioned, is only to get this next piece in because that'll completely encompass all of the area where we're gonna have new cabinetry. So I wanna get that piece up and I would like to install some of these lights. And then things that I have on order are sandblast and that's gonna be an ultra fine glass bead. Uh, luckily dad has a sandblast cabinet. Um, so our tin is gonna go in the sandblast cabinet, get brought back down to aluminum and uh, painted white. So that comes up from here to about here. And then this panel is so thin, I'm not gonna do the baseboard. I thought about it, and I think it'll actually look worse to have a, a thin piece of baseboard with a gap, you know, and caulking here, than it would to have just a large filler. So the large filler is gonna be like a one by 10 piece of pine, very simply done, uh, quarter round on either side, just to keep it really simple, and that'll cover that space there. And I actually think it it's gonna look really, really good, but by having that straight piece differentiating between here and the tin, um, it's gonna make the ceiling less busy than if it was just these lines straight over to the tin. So it's a nice solution both visually and for ease of construction. So that's, that's gonna be good. We're gonna to have to get some one buys. So that leaves us with just putting up this next panel and uh, getting the lights installed. We ran into an issue. Um, these puck lights were the, were the goal, right? And they're nice because they're thin and they rotate in. Um, but I didn't think to measure this right here. This is actually 
just ever so slightly too thick um, for my ribs. So up here, even when I took the foam out, this would not fit. So we decided to remove the puck lights from the center section and we're going with a surface mount light. And actually, I think they look pretty nice. I think they have a kind of old antique -y look similar to the bus. So I'll pull one of those out and show you what we're talking about. Okay, so here's the light in question. Pretty simple. It is plastic, stainless steel looking material on this side, quite thin. And what that looks like on the ceiling is that. So I think it's actually gonna suit the character of the bus pretty nice. And it doesn't interfere with our headroom. I might look into trying to match this same sort of thing for the 12 volt. Um, so we can have a center mount one, or I might try and do something different for the 12 volts. I'm not sure, but we wound up doing, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four in the front. And of course, there'll be more of these as we go back. So a nice simple solution to not having enough room to do recessed lights. I think they're gonna look just great. So we still will be using this recessed light here over the sink because we have enough room between the foam and the tin for the box. Likewise, there will be one in this closet. Again, there will be one in here in the shower. There will be one in here in the bathroom. And then back here, we'll be doing all surface mounts again. So that solution is that solution. Other things that I should update you on, we need to confirm our tank locations for our gray water tanks and fresh water tanks. So that's on my mind. We've already showed you guys the bay down here. It's not big, but it's definitely gonna be big enough for our fresh water tank, as well as some auxiliary storage. And I thought about doing a horizontal propane tank. They're really, really expensive. So I'm looking at this space here in the bus and I'm thinking we might just do a bunch of small, I wanna say they're 20 pound propane tanks that'll fit in here on a big slide drawer. So maybe four of them, for example, and they will be able to slide out and stand up vertically in this space. So I think that's gonna be a good solution for us. We'll run two at a time with a splitter. And then when those two are empty, we'll just swap the two and put the splitter on the other two. Um, the splitter will allow us to go one line out to our hot water heater and one line out to our oven. So I think that's the solution for propane right now. I'm not gonna spend, they want a little over $1,600 for a brand new horizontal propane tank. They're only 40 or 50 pound tanks. So I can equal that with these much less expensive small tanks. Um, and I don't think we're gonna have to be filling them that often. So it hasn't been shown in a while, but here's all the tin, which is gonna get sandblasted. So quite a lot of work there. I think this really long one might be a bit too long for the blast cabinet, but the rest of them are all gonna fit. The additional ceiling panels are there. Oh, and we have interesting, exciting news. The solar panels have arrived. Pay no attention to the broken one in the front. We put in a claim for that. It was on the bottom of the pallet and the glass is shattered, but the non-broken ones look like that. We got eight of these um, from Santan Solar out in Arizona. They are used panels, crazy good deal. Shipping was expensive. That's just the world we live in in 2022. But I think these panels were only 60 or $80 each. They're guaranteed to work uh, and they're household panels. So that is a smoking bargain. Gray water tanks that came with the bus. These are actually made by, I wanna say Winnebago. They have a mark on there somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm mounting these soon. Um, theoretically, I could use one of those for fresh water. There's no reason I couldn't, but I think I want a more rectangular, less awkward uh, system for that. These are designed to sit in like so. So that would sit under the chassis like that. You see you have your angle there and that big cutout that, I sh that, that you saw is where you put in your drain. And then these lips are what holds the tank in. You put angle iron under there 
and then your tank's in place. So definitely gonna use one of those for the gray water. Don't know if I'm gonna use one for the fresh water. Probably not. What else can I update us on? You've already seen the hot water heater, mostly installed. Just my two extensions right there for the washer and dryer. So I think that's about what I need to show you guys right now. Actually, we could head outside and I could show you the wheels that I got. Wheels and tires, it was a great find. Got those up in Maine, good bargain. One of them is brand new. It's a year 2000, but it's a brand new tire. So that's gonna be my spare. Um, has zero dry rot and it's just in excellent condition. The rest are not great. I think I can get away with using the four drive tires just around here locally, but I definitely need two new steers still. But the key component was I got the wheels. Those have skyrocketed in price in the last nine months um, and I cannot afford to buy a steel wheels new. So it was a great deal. Cost me $50 in fuel to get there and back for that free set. Let's go take a peek at those. Okay, so here's my little tire and wheel pile. These are the new ones. They are 22 fives, uh, steel wheels, bud style. So they have the angle right there for your uh, lug centered setup. The worst of the rust, it's just surface rust. They're in great condition. You know, these ones are a little flaky in the back, but again, it's gonna clean up really, really nice with the sandblaster. And this is the one that's gonna be that spare. I mean, it is beautiful. There's no dry rotting, no weirdness at all. And it's, uh, it's a very old tire, but it'll be the spare. These ones here are a little worn out, but they still are in good shape. I wanna say there's four that are the same size, maybe. That one down there is junk, that's a low profile. And then I think these two are also low profiles, but the wheels are all the same size. So we're gonna sandblast up the wheels, get those all cleaned up. Now over here, I have a set of newer casings um, that need to be retreaded, but they're all 2018, 19 date codes. Those are 24 fives though, which I got for these wheels here. And um, I'm trying to remember why these are on wheels. I don't remember that scenario very well. But the reality is with the aluminum bud wheels, we probably don't have enough stud length. And so when I got these, again, they were a killer deal, but um, they're probably not gonna work for us without new studs. And that's not something I was interested in tackling on our bus right now. The reason I don't wanna tackle those right now is not because I think it's a difficult process, it's because they're not a traditional press-in wheel stud. So with most semis and buses, it's a pretty generic wheel stud that you just press into the hub. Mine are bolt-in and I don't think they exist. There's literally a, a lock nut on both sides and that's how they bolt into the hub. That's how they did it on the old look buses and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get longer ones of those readily available and easy. So it was just simpler to go with steel wheels for now and that's what we'll do. So without further ado, we're gonna hop right into this. I need to put some more screws in this panel. It's a little saggy here and there. Get some of those in and then I'm gonna start installing these lights. Then we're gonna get dad out here. He's gonna help me do this panel overhead. And once that's done, we will hook up the electrical and actually test our lights. We haven't tested our electrical yet. It's something I was meaning to do and I wanted to do before we got this far along. Oops, what else can I say? I'm confident in my electrical skills. I'm not an electrician, but I didn't make any stupid mistakes that I'm aware of. I think we're gonna be just fine. If we have to tear out foam and fix stuff, so be it, but fingers crossed that's not gonna be the case. So we'll finally get our electrical hooked up. I'm not gonna go through the inverter yet because I don't have my batteries built, but I'm just gonna cheat and hook an extension cord up to the panel and uh, we'll be able to test all this stuff. So without further ado, let's throw you guys on time-lapse and on we go.
right, and just like that, three of them are in. I don't have the fourth over here in because I need a couple of bigger wire nuts since we're doing so many connections right there because that's power in and it's jumping to all these. So I just want to use a slightly larger wire nut to make sure I have a good solid connection. Those are a little small. Some of you may notice I didn't use boxes with these. Again, it's because there's no room. So the good news is there's no metal or anything. Um, they're completely surrounded by foam. So there shouldn't be any bus that if a wire nut were to fall off, anything could ground out on. Um, it's just one of the things that you have to compromise on. I just, I couldn't do it. There was no way for me to make them fit with a box. So but I think those look pretty nice. They're definitely not um, the most stylish things, but they do have a kind of 50s look to them, which I think will look really, really nice with this bus. So yeah, on we go. We'll get some bigger wire nuts for that one. We'll get this other panel up and keep on chugging. All right, so the fourth light is in. Dad's back there. You can see his elbow. And we're testing circuits using a power probe and a 12 volt battery. So go ahead on the refrigerator. Second one. All right, so this one's green. You want to try it? Yeah. Red. Perfect. So that one works. All right, guys, we did a million tests. We have all of our outlets that are wired. Uh, anywhere you see an actual outlet, those have been tested and they're working. Power probe, super cool. You can turn your power on and off uh, just using 12 volts. That was a good, safe way to test. We know it works. Nothing's sparking or being weird. So just as a cheat, I hooked up an old extension cord to my electrical panel. Now I have 120 at these same circuits. Uh, including the four lights. So I'm gonna kill work lights. I'll be right back and we'll turn those on. Okay, this is a big moment. Three, two, one, let there be daylight. Look at that. Now granted, these are not daylight bulbs. I hate daylight colors. So this is, I wanna say 3700K. Uh, 3000K, so soft white. They make a slightly less and they make more, of course, but 3000K, nice and gentle light, but there's plenty of it, and man, is it bright. Will there be dimmers in the future? Almost definitely. Um, I, I have a feeling Bree won't like this. <laughs> but anyway, this is exciting. They work, and, uh, you know, we're going to be able to finish the rest of the work on the bus with it plugged in soon. So that's a major milestone. So I don't know if this wire is in my way, but um, like always guys, that's gonna finish this video up. Thanks for watching Highland Shire. We made massive progress today. And before you know it, it is actually coming together. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.